Hey guys, this is a post-production pie with srlounge.com. All right guys, so our next section that we're gonna be covering is our lens correction section. I've selected exercise file 1-1 again for this demonstration, and we're gonna hit Control-6 or Command-6 on a Mac to bring up our lens correction panel on the right side, or to expand it at least. And uh, let's go over the first, the two options that we have. We can either make lens corrections by profile or manually. Now what a profile means is that it's gonna automatically detect which camera and which lens that we used when we shot this image from the metadata. And then it's gonna basically correct the distortion and the lens vignetting all on its own. So if we click Enable Profile Corrections, it automatically detects that we shot this on a Canon with a uh, 24 to 70 lens, and it's gonna use this Adobe 2470 profile to correct all of the distortion and everything in that image. And it actually does a pretty decent job too. So if we look at the edges, we can see that it's kind of bending and flattening out the horizon line a bit. It's straightening up these poles on the left side of the image. It's not bad, and it's also correcting some of the vignetting as well. We can also have additional control over distortion and vignetting by making adjustments down here. And we can remove chromatic aberration by clicking here, or at least it'll have Lightroom adjust and, and reduce chromatic aberration. Now, if this doesn't find the correct make and model of your camera and lens, you can choose it from this massive list of lenses that it has for every single, basically, camera maker. So you can choose the lens and it'll automatically adjust it based on whatever you choose. Now let's jump out of here and let's go to the other option for making lens corrections, which is to do it manually. So I'm gonna turn off the Enable Profile Corrections. We're gonna switch back to Manual. And now we have basically a manual controls for all of the different adjustments to transform and correct distortion on our lens. So we have distortion adjustment where we can drag the left and the right. We have a vertical adjustment for correcting vertical distortion, for correcting horizontal distortion, for correcting rotation, so we can even rotate our image. Um, we can correct for scale, uh, which is basically gonna shrink down the image. And whatever you see on this gray side, remember when we talked about basically when during your cropping tool, when you're in your crop overlay, you have an option to constrain to warp. If you select this, then it automatically crops in on the area where the image is. So basically that gray area on the edges, they'll get cropped out automatically by selecting this constrain to warp. It's the exact same option down here when you have constrained crop. So you can turn it on and off from either place. By the way, if we, can, if we don't have that constrained crop on and then we make adjustments here, then basically when we print this image, we will have this gray border wherever it shows up on this preview. So if, for example, we adjust the distortion, not that this is how much you'd want to go, but if you go up to the point where you can see these gray edges at the top and the bottom, you need to constrain the crop so that basically you don't see those areas when you export the image. All right, guys, so let's reset this. I'm going to hold down Alt and hit Reset Transform so it goes back to how it was originally. Uh, that's option on the Mac, by the way. And uh, let's go down to lens vignetting. Now, there's two different types of lens vignette adjustments. One is a basically an effect, which is a post-crop vignette. One is a lens correction effect, which is what you see here. Now, for artistic purposes, we actually use the lens vignetting effect in the lens corrections more than anything else. And the reason why is because this vignetting effect is very subtle. And it's very nice and it's just designed to actually correct the vignetting that's natural in your lens so all it does is brightens and darkens the edge of an image and the amount just controls the strength so if i go higher it's going to brighten and if i go lower it's going to darken if i pull the midpoint to the left it's going to pull that uh, basically pull the center of the vignetting effect all the way into the middle of the image whereas if i pull it to the other side it only affects the edges so it works not only for correcting natural vignetting, but for also creating artistic lens vignetting effects. New to Lightroom 4, we have the option to correct defringing. And basically what this is gonna do is it gives you two options to correct defringing along the highlight edges or along all edges. So like selecting one of these is gonna automatically defringe whatever areas that you have in your image. And those, we talked about fringing before, was kind of those dark black areas that you get along highlight edges. So it's a really nice kind of tool to fix that. It's an it's effect that you get a lot by kind of over, you apply too much clarity to an image and you get that fringe look. So we have that kind of lens correction as well in our lens correction options. So we'll be using the lens correction panel quite a bit throughout the tutorials. For now, just know that you can have it automatically make corrections via the profiles or you can do it manually and uh, you can play with the adjustments to kind of get an understanding of what each one does. But it's pretty simple and straightforward. So let's hit reset just to make sure no settings are applied to our image and we did have a crop setting actually applied. Uh, so let's go back, let's hit Control-6 or Command-6 to shrink up the lens correction panel, and now let's go to the next tutorial.